Temperature rise will bring widespread devastation and unprecedented extreme weather. New coronavirus cases emerge across the country. Obesity rates have more than doubled in kids. Cape Town is running out of water. Great. Um, hello and good morning, good afternoon and good evening, depending on where you're joining us from. My name is Sasha and I'm the Development and Partnerships Associate at Slam Out Loud and also the moderator for today's event. Joining me for an immersive workshop and discussion about creating practical environments for arts-based socio-emotional learning is co-founder and CEO of Slam Out Loud, Jigyasa Labru. We also have Supriya, an inspiring young speaker and poet who's experienced Slam Out Loud's own programming performing for us today. Slam Out Loud is a nonprofit based in India that uses the power of performance and visual arts to build socio-emotional learning and creative confidence skills like communication, critical thinking and empathy in children from disadvantaged communities. Slam Out Loud works with professional artists and e-learning resources to help these children build these skills. A lot of the team at Slam Out Loud have served as teachers in classrooms across India with the Teach for India Fellowship Program. And we have a strong curriculum team that has created arts-based SEL resources, touching on topics like gender equality and climate change with partners like Girl Rising and World's Largest Lesson. With our low tech and accessible response to COVID through our Arts for All initiative and strategic partnerships with local NGOs, state governments and international organizations, We've been able to bring the arts to 4.7 million children across various states and countries. We have been inspired and with any learnings and questions as you came to it with. Please ask your questions in the chat box and we'll answer some of them towards the end of the session. Remember to continue the conversation at hashtag World EDU Week. The stage is now Supriya's, who will be performing an original poem titled Judgment Tags and Labels. Supriya, so you're on mute, so you might have to unmute yourself. You're still on mute, Supriya. 
sorry. Yeah. Hi everyone, yeah. I'm Sukhya and today I'm going to perform my poem which is called Judgments, Tags and Labels. It is not it's not easy to look into the mirror and examine my own body to know if I'm tall enough to make an eye contact with the world and tell them that I am not different. To examine if I'm fair enough or not to such a state of fairness game. It is not easy. It's not easy to use ignorance as earplugs to escape all the names you call me. It is not not easy to see myself through the eyes of others and the fact that my body is all that matters. Now is the time. Now is the time to tell you that you can label me a computer judgments type and my name is I'm not a human, but somebody with the size, color, and quality that you can. Not afraid of your judgments, facts, and labels, and comments, and variables. Because I know, I know you don't know me enough to understand my story. I put yourself in my shoes and imagine why I am the way I show myself. You have all the media to keep fighting, advertising, recommending, and selling street highlighted beauty facts and beauty products to make fair, ugly, and superior, dark, ugly, and inferior. You have all the choice to turn your face away from my dark skin and label me as not beautiful. Keep degrading my confidence with all the advices to get a spot in skin. Because you have never known how I have been wearing all my marks, all my scars like an armor to fight for a community that will accept my dark skin. I have never read or heard my poems spoken with all the beauty I see in the world all the beauty my heart carries, all the beauty that keeps kindness and love alive in me, and all the stories that express my voice and the real me. You are all free to make fun of my shortness, my pride, my tallness, and laugh from too fat or too skinny, and live in moments of happiness. Because you have never looked into my eyes that dream fearlessly to bring a change in the world, the society. I have never measured the distance I have worked tirelessly on a place for my talents, hard work, dreams, desires, by fighting a battle with all the judgments, tags, and labels. You can find me in bits and pieces in all those called Bihari as a token of insult, disrespect, and inferiority, because you haven't yet learned what is oneness, have not to develop the love that people react. You are still rooted within your own daily rituals of back and forth identity. You are all free to make a choice to like or dislike, to love me or even hate me. Because I, my body, heart, and soul needs enough love from no one but you. Every part of me needs freedom from hatred for myself, just from me. I will be happy. I will smile only when I can accept myself and stop waiting for others. Me. You can always, always, always judge me because I am no more going to use you as sedimentation and filtration to let my genuineness set inside myself. I am no more going to see my words and my dignity and separate them into useful duties and non useful ones that I put by my teeth, cut down my throat, and never set them free. I am going to be my live my life. And stop, stop building mirrors in everyone I meet and accept the reflection the identity they show me. I'm most welcome with your tags and labels to judge me. Thank you. Thank you so much, Supriya, for that extremely heartfelt performance about something I think a lot of us are able to relate to in some way or form. Um, with socio-emotional learning as a focus in an art education, any student is encouraged to express themselves in a way that also encourages them to touch on extremely deep-rooted feelings and questions they may have about themselves and the world. I now invite Jagyasa to the floor to give us a little insight on what she has witnessed and experienced in the classroom as a Teach for India fellow and how that led to forming Slam Out Loud and what she's learned over the past four years since its, since its inception. 
Hi, Sasha. Hello, Jagatha. <laughs> Mm, all right, Sasha, do you want me to like answer that? Yes, please go ahead and give us your spiel about your journey, and then we definitely have questions for you um, about the rest of the session as well. Yeah, sure. Um, so um, I think when I started teaching in a low income classroom in the teacher in India fellowship, one of the biggest gaps that I recognized was um, that, you know, our dreams for children who came from low income communities, dreams for children that I taught were always about um, them either finding a job or at best doing well at academics. And, and everything that we thought of for high income children, which was, you know, uh, thinking about their passion, thinking about like what it means to have a voice, what their own dreams are, like these things did not exist for the children that I worked with. And uh, similarly, while I had grown up having access to spaces for um, discovering myself, discovering my voice, artistic spaces, you know, which are correlated to developing social emotional learning skills, my children did not have any access uh, to such artistic spaces. Uh, we dug out, uh, you know, a little bit of data and found out that um, even in a state like Delhi, um, in the public schools, our ratio of our teachers to number of students is 1 is to 1400, which means less than 20 hours of art based learning uh, for children who need it most. And and that's really where um, Sam Out Loud started uh, within my classroom. Uh, I started bringing in a lot of like theater, poetry, uh, music into my own class, and I saw how that changed my children. And uh, slowly the idea started growing out from there. Um, it became about involving, you know, other artists who are really passionate about an art form and and children who might need exposure uh, to that art form and to that kind of learning to develop social emotional learning skills. And um, um, that's that's now where we are. We place artists into classrooms who work with children um, and uh, through the art forms of theater, storytelling, visual art and poetry. We train teachers who might want to bring artistic opportunities and art into their class, but don't have the resources to do so. And thirdly, we create products and assets like videos, lesson plans, guidelines that you know children themselves also can access and um, get uh, get some form of artistic learning, especially through low tech platforms like WhatsApp and IBRS. Yeah, thank you so much for that, uh, Jagyasa. And we'll learn a little bit more about these different products and stuff as well. But I feel like a lot of teachers and practitioners um, probably resonate with your journey and seeing how kids are just kind of trained to think about like getting the right job or getting the next best thing and not really thinking about their passions and thinking about how they can develop just themselves as human beings who exist on this earth. Um, so I have a few questions for you on how to create a practical environment to bring that out of students. Um, so what are some best practices for setting norms and creating a safe space for students to explore their emotions and feelings in such a way? Yeah, I think um, like especially when it comes to norm setting in classroom where um, the aim is for children to really discover themselves and find their own voice. Uh, the best way to lead is uh, in a circle, which means that by sharing power and giving power to everyone inside the classroom, um, like I highly recommend that, you know, the norm setting itself starts from a place of being equal and starts from a place of equity. What push do children need uh, to feel equal in a classroom? Um, I think then, you know, really basing it in the values of um, authenticity or the values of respect and honesty um, and bringing in rules like, you know, step in, step out, take space, give space, um, placing it um, in the values that allow children to really express without fear um, would allow teachers to be able to create such uh, you know, safe spaces for expression. I think the second would be um, creating, uh, not linking success 
to producing a certain kind of outcome i think um, often children like end up creating something very similar to each other because they feel like only certain kinds of outputs are appreciated but arts is especially that space where children um, can have any kind of answer and still you know there there is no right or wrong answer so for teachers to be able to communicate that in a classroom is extremely extremely important to share that you know there is no right answer and um all children are free to express in whatever ways they like um, i think yeah that should be good enough to start with yeah thank you for that and and just kind of pushing that question a little further like what are some best practices for teachers to better plan and, and incorporate specifically socio emotional learning activities into their lesson plans like i think teachers tend to think about their lesson plans as just focusing on the content but what are some things that teachers can do to like really assess where their class is and how to incorporate that sort of thinking into their lesson plans yeah uh, so i think um if teachers are able to create opportunities for students to reflect enough within any classroom whether it is a science classroom whether it is a math classroom those are opportunities for social emotional learning um of course like bringing any kind of artistic practices in your classroom is an opportunity to uh, not just build artistic uh, opportunity like artistic skills or social emotional skills but also an opportunity to bring joy inside a classroom so starting your class with you know um, an energizer or asking children to um, you know let's say um begin with the song or end with the song or uh, doing things like uh, you know in between a classroom ask children to reflect on a question and ask them to draw it out um so uh, all of these are also things that um that allow teachers to within other subjects also create space for social emotional learning apart from that of course uh, creating separate spaces where children can talk about what is important to them creating open mic circles um creating spaces where uh, they're sharing some artwork that they've created um these are otherwise um, you know some other spaces where um um where teacher can create space for social emotional learning yeah yeah i think it it's a misleading concept to think that it's only for like arts classrooms like it can definitely be for any subject that teachers um yeah. teach um and lastly so i want to talk a little bit about arts for all which is an uh, online program started by slam out loud last year as a response to the nationwide lockdowns due to covid um and it serves to provide students self-directed bite-sized arts-based um socio-emotional learning activities on a weekly basis through a slam out loud's whatsapp chatbot and also via online sessions with trained facilitators can you tell us a little bit about what went into planning and creating these audience understand Sasha I just lost you for a bit all right um so i've lost sasha but i think i do sort of like uh, understand what the question is about it's about uh, like our recent arts for all program um and um, which brings sel uh, learning to children um so um i think arts from arts for all really came from a space of like understanding children's need uh, which is um um when covid happened our kids told us that you know they weren't really missing academic content or they weren't really missing what they were doing at school every day 
um but they were really really missing meeting their friends um engaging uh with their classmates or like engaging in doing something and while like students from high income school immediately were able to make a shift so they went from like offline to online learning almost overnight but that didn't happen to children who came from low income communities so we reached out and found out uh that you know this is what they were looking for uh, the other thing that we found out was that um our children did have access to um a medium like whatsapp for an hour or two every day and uh, that meant that you know if we send them artistic activities on whatsapp they would be able to do them and we had fantastic response on that so we started sending out like artistic activities through whatsapp which was scaffolded so activities were text based video based audio based um and children could access them according to their internet bandwidth and within the first four weeks we had about more than 600 organizations that signed up to receive these activities and um you know share them with their children and and within the first month itself we were reaching about 100000 children so um uh, so clearly um, this was something that other organizations other people needed and slowly a couple of government bodies approached us and um, uh, we scaled this program very quickly because there was a very stated need for children to also have spaces for expression and have some creative outcomes even during the pandemic yeah no that makes so much sense um can you hear me now yes okay great yeah no that makes um so much sense and i think just the level of care that went into like really assessing what children wanted at this time instead of just coming up with an idea because we as an organization thought it was a good idea is like i think really crucial i think teachers really need to tap into what it is that their students want from them as well um so thank you for those extremely candid and comprehensive responses jigyasa um keeping these in mind i'd like to invite all of our audience members to participate um in an actual art based sel activity that we feel gives a little glimpse into the little ways we can both encourage creativity and self expression um and also do something artistic in the process um so we're going to write a short poem uh dedicated to someone and this is just for yourself uh we don't need to share it after um but it just gives you an idea of what it is um it means to do something artistic but also focus on your feelings so think of the person that you'd want to dedicate this poem to um and as you think of this person close your eyes and breathe deeply continue this for around 10 breaths and keep your back straight relax your shoulders and take a moment to feel your surroundings so let yourself breathe and let yourself ease into a smile if possible continue to take deep breaths now think about an emotion you would like to write a poem about it can be love it can be happiness sadness you know any sort of emotion that you would like to write a poem about think about a color for your chosen emotion um love could be pink happiness could be yellow sadness could be blue just think about a color for your chosen emotion okay Now name an object that has your chosen color. And it can be any object. Um be as creative as you can. Um if you've gone with love, uh love is pink, um like a puppy's tongue, like a strawberry lollipop, anything. Name an object that has your chosen color.
if you had to describe this emotion using a sound, what would it be? Now, think of an adjective or word that describes your emotion. Love is beautiful, love is messy, um, happiness is, it can be a state of mind or fleeting, um, sadness is, you know, is unwelcome maybe. So just think of an adjective or word that describes your emotion. And now as you have all of these different pieces of your poem, once you add the right grammar, so conjunctions, prepositions, whatever, and construct all of those sentences together, you have a poem about your favorite emotion or the emotion that you chose. So I hope you all enjoyed that activity and got an understanding of how easy it is to turn even the simplest thing into a 10 to 15 minute of getting in touch with your emotions. There was the breathing in the beginning to relax your mind and get ready for the activity. Um, and then there was the step-by-step -step instructions that were simple enough that anyone could follow. It really is that simple to set the mood and environment to engage yourself and young learners with socio-emotional learning through the arts. It, it really is like what Jigyasa said, like it can be in any subject, right? Um, doesn't have to just be in arts. It could just be as simple as starting your day with a song or ending with reflection. Um, it's just really inserting these very mindful um, instructions in any sort of activity that you do. Okay. Now I'm moving on to any questions we may have. Um, if there are any. Though Jigyasa's very comprehensive answers may have already answered all those questions. Q and A. It's just taking a bit. Okay. Okay. So it seems like we don't have any pressing questions right now. Just a lot of wonderful words of encouragement from people all around the world. Thank you so much. Um, if Jigyasa, would you like to close us out with a note of thanks or just some parting words to anyone that's listening um, about the session today and about your journey as um, someone who's been in these classrooms as well? Of course, thank you so much, Sasha. Uh, and thank you for taking us through the activity. Um, everybody, uh, our resources are completely open source and available on our website. So if you want to bring any kind of artistic learning in your classrooms and need support, uh, feel free to use our resources as much as you like and do send us some feedback our way. Um, at the same time, if you feel you need additional support, uh, do write to us. Our contact details are also mentioned on our website uh, and we'd be really, really happy to help. Um, we believe that you know children, no matter where they come from, should get safe spaces to find their voice. And uh, if you feel passionately about the same too, we'd love to get in touch. Thank you. Thank you so much, Jigyasa. Join Time Magazine's lead education reporter alongside global educators and advocates to explore the impacts of teaching forgiveness. I teach forgiveness because it can have a positive impact in my students' families. It helps my students thrive in the face of adversity. Students who can forgive are happier. Join us to hear from teachers and non-leaders on how and why to include forgiveness in your classroom.
rise will bring widespread devastation and unprecedented extreme weather. New coronavirus cases emerge across the country. Obesity rates have more than doubled in kids. Cape Town is running out of water.